So I wanted to explain how ACE inhibitors worked. And I think uh, the thing that helped me understand this the fastest um, was just to think of sodium increasing blood pressure. So as soon as sodium increases, and I'm talking about uh, in the blood and in the body, um, blood pressure increases. And I think of this in just in terms of uh, if you have more salt in a solution, it's going to draw the water from other areas. So if you have more salt in your blood, it's going to draw more water from the rest of your body into your bloodstream and therefore increase your blood pressure. So, uh, the next step to understanding this whole process about how ACE inhibitors worked is just to understand the renin angiotensin system. So I'm going to quickly go through that now. And uh, the story sort of starts over here. I, I'm sorry for my terrible drawing, but this is a, um, a glomerulus. And if you remember, this is where blood filters, or things filter from your blood through the glomerulus and across the uh, basement membrane and into your nephron. So this is stuff in your blood and then it filters out and this is essentially urine that passes down there into your bladder. And these little dots here represent the juxta glomerular apparatus. And these these uh, juxta glomerular cells essentially sense sodium and blood pressure. So as the sodium falls in these cells and the blood pressure falls in these cells, they produce an enzyme that's called renin. And renin, renin, is, an en renin is an enzyme produced in response to those from the juxtaglomerular cells. Now this is my, my representation of a liver and inside the liver sits something called angiotensinogen angiotensinogen and it doesn't really do much until renin comes along and converts it into angiotensin 1 so without renin angiotensin just sits in the liver doing nothing when renin is produced in response to this, it converts the angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. Now angiotensin 1 doesn't really do much, just sits in your blood floating around until it comes into contact with something called angiotensin converting enzyme, which basically does what it says on the tin. It comes from the lungs, um, it sits in the lungs and as this angiotensin passes through the blood vessels in the lungs the angiotensin converting enzyme turns it from angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 now the angiotensin 2 is important for a number of reasons it actually does something so this is the key part now it does a few things but all of them essentially amount to an increase in blood pressure. So the way it does this is it acts directly, firstly, on uh, the thirst center. So it increases thirst. Now if you increase thirst, you drink more water, and that water has an effect to increase the volume in your blood. So essentially it increases your blood pressure. So it accomplishes that that way. The second thing that it does is vasoconstriction. So the angiotensin 2 <clears throat> vasoconstricts your blood vessels and if you constrict them you'll increase the pressure. So in that sense it increases the blood pressure. Now the third thing it does is it acts this is my little drawing of a kidney and it's wearing a hat and the hat is essentially the um, adrenal cortex and on the outer layer of the adrenal cortex which is called the glomerularis just to complicate things um, is produced something called aldosterone now this is another 
aldosterone. Now this aldosterone acts on the kidneys and it acts on the distal tubules as they as they come past and uh, it causes reabsorption of sodium reabsorption of sodium from the uh, from the nephron or from the urine essentially back into the blood so by doing that it increases the sodium in the blood and increases the blood pressure so this clever system essentially takes you from uh, the juxtaglomerular cells sensing a low sodium and a low blood pressure through a number of different steps to increasing your sodium and increasing your blood pressure. Now I've already established that um, the renin, the angiotensinogen and the angiotensin 2 don't particularly do much in this system, they're just steps along the way. It's only when you get the action of the angiotensin converting enzyme to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 that you end up with uh, all of these effects that end up increasing sodium and increasing your blood pressure. So if we can block this system with the ACE inhibitors you then block this pathway and you block all of this from happening and so you don't get an increase in sodium, you don't get an increase in blood pressure. So you're just left with this system. And as a result, ACE inhibitors work to reduce your blood pressure and reduce your sodium. Simple as that.